I've officially hit 13 months sober. I have quit counting the months pretty much. Definitely quit, a, quit counting the days after six months for the most part because 180 days was a fun number for me. With those 13 months came so many different roller coasters. There were some up and downs, there were some straight ones, and there were some definitely spinning ones. I had a really rough time going into month 12. So between 11 and, 11 and 12 months, I was definitely questioning my self-worth and that is not okay. We don't wanna to have to question our self-worth. We don't wanna to have to question our enoughness for anybody. And I know that that comes with lots of struggles, lots of questions. I'm not good enough. I, I don't know if I can do it. I mean, all the questions. And just to let you know, you are good enough for people when you quit drinking alcohol. It's them that choose not to be around you and them that think that they aren't good enough for you. But really, nobody is ever good enough. Everybody is always good enough for anybody. It's just what value do you bring to these people or you bring to them, they bring to you, vice versa. It's a really hard struggle that I have encountered the most with quitting drinking. Some friends look at you differently. People, when they talk to you about alcohol, it's so, it's kind of awkward because I only had one shot or I only had one beer. And so I don't care what you do with your life. I don't care if you drink the whole bottle. I just, I don't want to drink. Just because I don't want to drink doesn't mean that you don't have to drink. I mean, if that's what you want to do with your life, that's on you. If you don't want to lose weight, if you don't want to be healthy, if you want to kill your liver, if you don't want to progress in life, that is on you. The biggest thing that I have learned is the biggest E word ever, empowerment. It is very empowering when you can go into a room and say, no, I'm good, I don't drink. Never in my life did I think that I would be one that would be saying I don't drink. There's something about the strength in that. I mean, can you tell me how amazing it feels if you've quit drinking and somebody asks, do you want to drink? And you say no, how does that feel to you? It has to feel so empowering and I love it. I, I get amused now when people justify their drinking to me. I think that it's a waste of, I just think drinking is a waste of time. You're wasting time with your friends, you're wasting time with your family, you're wasting time. The time, the clock is ticking and nobody said that it's gonna be easy to quit drinking. Nobody said that the beginning is fun. But when you actually realize that you don't need alcohol to have fun, you really start realizing how empowering it is and say, screw everybody else. I'm gonna go enjoy myself and have a grand old time whether you're drinking or not. I am at a place where it's frustrating to me and I feel like there needs to be so much more education on alcohol than there actually is. And I know some of you can agree with me. A lot of people don't realize that, that it's super unhealthy for you, that it's causing cancer, that it's causing relationship damage, mental issues. It's causing you to stay stagnant in your life. You're on that straight roller coaster. And yeah, when you quit drinking, you're gonna be up and down on every which way. It's going to be the ride of your life. You are going to find yourself and you know, it just absolutely drives me absolutely crazy. And please tell me if you agree. When you've gone so many months or years sober and you see people just killing themselves, you see the bloat in their face, their discolored faces and their big old beer bellies or alcohol bellies and you just look at them and you come to a place in your life where you're oh my gosh, I'm not that person anymore. My face isn't bloated from alcohol anymore. It's funny, I can look at people now. I can smell alcohol from a mile away and people try to say, oh, I don't drink, I haven't drank. <laughs> BS, I can smell it on you now unless you drank so much the night before that 
it just is rolling over. But I'm to the point that that roller coaster that was twisting and turning, it's finally came to a place where it's enjoyable, it's fun, it's empowering. And I stopped caring about what Joe Blow was doing with their time. And except I have just chosen to take myself out of the equation. And I think that's my problem, is you come to a part in your sobriety that you're totally fine with being sober and you don't need validation from anybody. You are good enough for yourself. You're good enough for everybody else because you've done the work. You have absolutely done the work. How many of you have actually struggled with wanting to stay drinking because you think that's who you are? You think that you're not gonna have friends because you quit drinking. You don't think you're gonna be good enough if you quit drinking. And you wanna find all the freaking excuses. How many E's have we listed in this? The excuses that I hear for people not quitting drinking or saying, oh, I only drink this much. Oh, well, I cut back or I did this. Well, I don't care. Did you quit drinking? Because that's all I care about. Good for you for taking a three week break and feeling good and then putting yourself right back through that misery. I mean, once I got a taste of how it feels being sober and not putting alcohol in my body, I never want to go back. People ask me, do you think you'll, you'll ever drink again? And I was no. I have no desire to drink. I love all the options that are out here now for mocktails and yeah, mocktails. It's still fun to have fun drinks. Want me to call them smoothies? I can call them smoothies. <laughs> I can call them spritzes, I don't know. But it's fun. I can go out to restaurants and get fun drinks still, but they don't, they're not filled with sugar and alcohol. Well, maybe some sugar, but not as much sugar as I was consuming. I realized that I was consuming probably over 70 grams per serving each drink that I was drinking during summertime because I was a vodka lemonade girl and I would sit out back and we would polish off a fifth and probably a bottle of lemonade. Tell me, there's tons of sugar in that and it's kind of really gross to think about now and I mean I don't know what your drink of choice is but look at the label and tell me that there's no sugar in it. People think that whiskey is better than beer. People think that beer is better than vodka. People think that vodka has less calories in it or tequila has less calories in it. It's, come on. You just get to the point where you realize that none of it is good for you and you shouldn't be consuming any of it. And that is the empowering part. Put down the bottle of wine, moms, you don't need it. You don't need to celebrate every freaking event in life with a bottle in your hand. You don't need to have champagne every freaking new year. You don't need, or at every event, you don't need to have shots of whiskey with your friends. And you can still be a part of life. You can still do just as much, if not 10 times more. You can 10X your life. And that is the most empowering thing in life is realizing that you don't need alcohol to be a better person. You actually need to get rid of alcohol. Do you question your relationships with your family? Do you question your relationship with your friends? Do you question your relationship with yourself or your kids? And then realize the main factor of all your issues comes down to that one dumb bottle. I don't care, but it's very true. I look back and I think of all of the things that I missed out on with my kids. And heck, I'm thinking about signing up for volleyball to coach my daughter's volleyball team. Would I have done that a year ago? Two years ago? Hell no. I would have been, no, that's cutting into my drinking time. Do you not hang out with your family because you need to sit around and drink alcohol because that's what you think life is? Do you have to have a glass of wine or beer or a glass of whiskey or a cocktail at every nightly dinner? Is that the first thing you do when you get home? I mean, because I know a lot of us instantly come home, crack open a beer, pour ourselves a glass of wine, or reach for the liquor. Can't say that the majority of us haven't, or don't do that already, or still. But think of all the things that you can do after you get off work, or at the end of the day, if you didn't have to consume the alcohol. If you just let it, if you just let life happen, joyfully and peacefully, the alcohol's not bringing you peace, not at all. 
If anything, it brought more interruptions to my life, setbacks and everything that I can like think of. And I look back and it's embarrassing to realize that I let alcohol control my life, uh, distance myself from close people. And now it's my choice what I do in my free time, how people perceive me instead of people looking at me being like, oh, well, how much has Megan had to drink today? Are you, seriously, have you ever thought that maybe you're not wanted around because you drink and people don't, the drunk you are? Because I know I question myself. I was annoying. My own husband would be, well, how much are you gonna drink tonight? Please don't drink that much. Seriously, are you the person, the guy or girl in the room that people don't wanna be around because you are a horrible drunk and nobody like wants to invite you anymore because you just can't handle your liquor? Well, I got to that point where I couldn't handle my liquor and I didn't even want to be around myself. So now I can walk into the room, be the sober one, not act a fool, and be feel so empowering by saying no to the number one thing that people think that they have to indulge in. The biggest poison, got a little friend here, she might have some babies, but think about letting it go. Go for a walk after work, I don't know. Things that helped me were walking, working out, focusing on my nutrition, and realizing that I was more present with my children. The most empowering thing you can do for yourself or your life is walking away from alcohol and just realizing that it's not doing anything for you, it's damaging your life, and it's not helping you whatsoever. So you don't need to hide your alcohol. You don't need to keep saying that you're trying. You just need to try. You just have to do it. You just have to realize that there is something to say for somebody that can get sober in such an alcohol-driven world. Hang on to that empowering feeling and realize that being sober out of, if you're one out of 10 of those people, people are gonna look at you. You're gonna lead the way to a sober life. You're gonna lead, lead a way. People are gonna start questioning what they're doing and realizing, wow, you can still have fun. You can still enjoy life and be who you are without the alcohol. Don't waste your life away anymore. Let it go. Realize what you're doing. You're damaging so much and it's so sad. I know so many people that think that that's just who they are and that's who I thought I was and it's not. Now I can go to events and engage with people and remember the conversations. And I'm just telling you now, I will repeat it over and over. Letting go of alcohol is the most empowering thing you can do for yourself. Think about that, give it a try. Realize that there's so much support out there. You don't have to do it on your own. There are doctors to give you medicine. There are communities that help you. There are treatments, there are outpatient facilities. There's AA, I mean, there's so many things. There's books, there's podcasts, there's YouTube, there's friends, there's family. You have no excuse. Go the excuses and enjoy the empowerment. Subscribe so we can keep pushing and helping more and more people. The more we reach, the more we can help.